Hi, I saw this on Twitter. Some LEDs are lighting up when they go through the reflow oven. Uh, what the? What's going on here? A LED across a capacitor, heated up, it lights up. I gotta check this out. So where does this come from? Well, I heard about this from uh, Greg Darvel on Twitter. Highly recommend you follow Greg. Does great, uh, like, close-up macro photos of, like, SMD and soldering, among other uh, things. Really great. Anyway, he says, weird phenomenon. During reflow, some green lead power indicators are emitting slightly. Seems like maybe uh, during reflow, solid polymer capsule is an effect on creating small electrical current. Does anyone know if th what this effect is called? Maybe some further reading. And he did a test with a uh, 220 mic uh, 50 volt electrolytic uh, surface mount cap like this heat gun onto the cap with a lead and sure enough it lights up so very interesting and Ian here uh, pointed out this uh, stack exchange article about somebody saw these leads light up um, in the reflow oven but I suspect if you notice there's a thermocouple there and the thermocouple looks like it might be touching a pad that's coincidentally near all those leads so i suspect that is not due to what we're seeing here because there's no capacitors um this is due to uh capacitive electrical coupling whatever it is through the thermocouple uh through the um shielded bottom and everything else so i don't think uh anything's there's anything to see there but there there, there you go i'll link in the uh, thread down below but fascinating you can light a lead by heating up a capacitor. Hmm, let's do some experiments. I've got an ammeter, uh, I will hook it up in a second, I'll show you that. Um, it's on microamps uh, range, and I've got a, you know, a selection of SMD electrolytics here. I've just chosen a 470 uh, microfarad 16 volt um, jobby. I don't know the brand of these, because this is one of these uh, just generic <laughs> cheap ass uh, kits. Um, but it does have the split in the top there, which indicates um, that that is not a solid uh, polymer capacitor that indicates that it's an a uh, wet electrolytic uh, type capacitor which it looks like from the photo um, is similar to the one uh, Greg's using. Uh, somebody else on Twitter um, mentioned that it could be some sort of pre-charge uh, slash dielectric uh, absorption of the capacitor linking dielectric absorption. Have I done a video on that? I'm sure I've mentioned it at least <laughs> many a couple of times uh, in videos. Anyway if I hook this up. Um, I've just had this sitting here before. It was actually hooked up and shorted out um, with the load of the uh, milliamp, uh, the microamp um, input here, which is what 1k or something like that. Um, but anyway, I'm going to hook this up and watch watch the reading. There will actually be a charge. It jumped up to a couple of microamps there. So there is some sort of um, uh, dielectric absorption charge building up, but it can't be that um, on its own because the lead would instantly just drain any of that away. Anyway, here we go. I've got my uh, heat gun set to 100 degrees um, Celsius. So I don't want to, you know, take it to like reflow temperatures yet. I want to do it just a low temperature. So let's see what 100 degrees Celsius does. Here we go. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, sure enough, it's going up, but not much. I mean, you know, <laughs> 0.2 microamps, that's a sniff of an oily rag stuff. That's half a bee's dick. There's not a huge heat sink effect in this because this is like a Delrin uh, plastic or whatever. But, you know, look, heat is actually doing something to it. So there you go. We're getting up to a microamp. But uh, Greg said that he was um, seeing like tens of microamps or something. Okay, I'll ramp the temperature up. Okay, let's take it up to 250 degrees Celsius and hopefully um, I don't melt any of my um, stick vice here. I don't actually know what the temperature rating of this is, but anyway, and 0.3, whoa, 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 yep, yeah, yep, yeah, nah, something's, nope, something's going on there. Nah, I won't do that anymore. Okay, let's try that again on a metal surface this time so we don't damage anything. Uh, yeah, it's faster, yep, yep, it's going higher. Here we go, here we go, now we're talking. Now we're talking, sure enough, once you get into the tens of microamps range, you should definitely be able to light, light a really high efficiency. Ah, th there we go, it's dropping back down. It's dropping back. There you go, so it peaked at about 30. That is clearly going back down, okay? So I've heated that up. So what uh, Greg said is that um, it didn't work after he'd already heated it once. So I'll wait for that to cool down a bit. 
blow on it and then we'll see, oh look, it's gone negative. Isn't that interesting? So there's some interesting physics going on here. Like my first thought was that, yeah, it was like a uh, thermoelectric effect with the dissimilar metals, um, like in the junctions of the LEDs and the capacitors and all sorts of stuff, right? There's bond wires in the LEDs, there's, uh, you know, there's actual uh, metals used inside the leads in the, and there's the foil in the capacitors and everything else, right? But if it goes up to like uh, 30 microamps or something or whatever we saw there, and then it comes back down, it peaks up and then starts coming back down, then we've got something very interesting happening with um, almost certainly the dielectric material in here as if it's like it's boiling off or something and then it's not going to happen again. So if we reheat this and then we find it doesn't happen again, then that indicates that there's something in the capacitor, most likely the dielectric, that like is boiling off or something like that. Doesn't really affect the capacitance because everyone knows that you can reflow these things. They're designed to be reflowed, not continuously um, and certainly not repeatedly uh, reflowed, but you can certainly uh, reflow them once onto the board and everything's hunky-dory. They, they still remain, their capacitance the remains, their ESR remains, everything else, right? Here we go. But will it get back to 30 odd microamps and you saw like it's slow at first but then it's sort of like the heat got internal and then it says it's going up here it goes here it goes it's accelerating but will it get high enough again it's not it was going up faster than that before wasn't it it's but yeah it's not getting it's not getting this high that's it and it's going to drop right it reached eight this time aha gotcha 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 and that's just oh no it's yeah it's it's, it's going to drop oh it actually started dropping drastically there all right it's cooled down again let's try it one more time at 30 odd microamps the first time i should be recording this <laughs> the only difference between science and mucking around is <laughs> writing it down Ayana. yeah i don't think we're going to get there i think there's diminishing returns now oh no 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 hang on you can do it and then it goes down, 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 up, up, up. Is that just me moving it? Is that just me, like, doing the airflow? Anyway, yeah, like, we, we take it off and immediately it drops back down. Okay, let's try that again, but I've got the 121GW here, which allows us to uh, just log the current here. And this will uh, potentially present a uh, different load than the uh, BM786. Multimeters can have different um, shunt resistor values on the uh, microamp and current amps. So let's do exactly the same thing again. So I'll start the data logging. Sure enough, ramping up, 32, and we're going back down, back down, back down. Okay, it's cooled down enough. Let's log that again. This is cycle number two, and we don't expect it to go back to where we 30 odd microamps we got before. It's gonna have a much flatter top on it. I can tell you that for nothing now. Now it's dropping. It's gonna be a much smoother, more stretched out graph. The, like it's not gonna have a really high peak on it. And if you're wondering what we did to that poor little sucker, even though that was, you know, like, 250 was like a reflow uh, temperature uh, cycle, pretty, fairly typical. So like 407 uh, microfarads for the 470. Um, dissipation factor, what else have we got? We can give you the ESR on that bad boy, 0.464. And for reference, here's a brand spanker. Haven't cycled it at all. In fact, its series resistance is actually um, higher. There you go. So yeah, I just haven't damaged this at all as far as you know your regular parameters go. All right, I'm going to work with a known quantity now. Uh, so I went to the bunker. All the best stuff comes from the bunker. And here's some Panasonic uh, jobbies, 220 mic, 16 volt. And uh, there you go. For those playing along at home, you can look them up and uh, you can get the data sheets. I don't think we're going to have a shortage of them for testing. And the Panasonic that's been sitting there for like 10 years. Here we go. What happens if we hook it up? Whoa, look at that. That jumped up a lot. Wow. Okay, so here we go, heating up the Panasonic. Yep, she's rising. Similar to the other one we had. So two entirely different brands and it's going back down. So would it reach 16 point something there? And this is our second time. Nah, there you go, it's dropping back down. 
So check this out. This is absolutely fascinating. We have the data here. Uh, the orange one here is the no-namer. That was the first test. And then the blue was the uh, second test. So you can see how that the uh, first test, it peaked right up to like 33 microamps or something like that. And then it uh, just dropped fairly quickly and then here this must be where I removed the uh, heat gun and then it uh, dropped off and it went negative down here but as you can see the second test I've had to sort of like shift uh, the data here to because I didn't like line up the exact um, you know thermal profile so they've just been shifted and you can see I think it does take a similar amount of time to get to the peak though um, but then it just stays there it's it, like <laughs> It just stays there and then this must be where I remove the heat. So then you've got the Panasonic one. The grey one is the first test here. And you can see it's kind of got like a little humpy sort of, uh, not a not a hump, plateau of like a front porch, uh, so to speak. And then it ramps up and goes off and it has a, it doesn't have the same sort of nice profile that the no-namer does. It sort of like goes down a linear slope and then it's got a larger slope like this and then it goes negative and then it starts oscillating. Is there more data to that actually? Yeah, I thought there was. <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, there's extra data. It went like this. Now, I can't remember if I actually took the heat gun off at this point where it neg neg negative or I, if I kept it on there like that but there's some interesting little negative action happening there but anyway the uh, second test is the yellow one here uh, for the Panasonic jobby and it actually ramped up quicker if you you know I don't know exactly where the heat started but if you shift it over um, yeah it sort of ramped up to its peak uh, quicker and then it sort of went down and then it, it did a sort of like a plateau kind of thing so it's a different profile to what we got for the no-namer. So that's interesting. And these are the same heat, same heat flow, same, you know, roughly the same distance. All the conditions are basically the same into the same load uh, meter. And yeah, they're different profiles. So there's something happening there, interestingly, with the internal chemistry and all the physics. I don't know. Um, it could be some obscure physics thing. It could be a combination of obscure physics and uh, chemistry stuff. It could just be pure chemistry. It could be metallurgy type. Um, you know, there could be some uh, thermoelectric effect, as I said, um, happening there. It could be a combination of any of those or all of those. I don't know, but it's it's absolutely fascinating, is it not? You can generate tens of microamps by heating up your electrolytic capacitors and unfortunately I haven't been able to find any LEDs I found LEDs that work at 30 microamps when I put them on my current generator they work fine when I put them on the cap either cap they don't work uh, I found a red one couldn't find a green one yet but anyway now the reason why my LEDs didn't uh, light is uh, likely because they're non-linear devices. Yeah, sure, you can push that 30 microamps through, but if there's not the compliance voltage required, um, then uh, like the actual voltage generated on the cap in this case, then, well, they're not uh, going to light. So I definitely have to LED that lit in room light with 30 microamps and it does nothing with this uh, cap. So yeah, you got to get a specific um, like really high efficiency uh, lead and stuff like that. So it's, you know, don't be disappointed if you try this and it doesn't work, but you saw Greg's lead actually light up. So <laughs> I'm sure it works. I've just got to find one. So yeah, an interesting follow-up experiment might be to actually uh, plot the voltage as well as the uh, current as well. So uh, then you can actually see the compliance voltage and the actual power uh, delivered the power and the capable power actually delivered from this thing it's not much but it is enough to light up certain types of LEDs but that is interesting I might have to ask one of the capacitor manufacturers uh, I'll reach out because I have a contact and we'll see if they have any theory that explains this but if you do or if you've got if this is like known thing and it's published uh, somewhere or it's in some app node and buried away somewhere then please leave it in the comments down below so thanks to greg for finding that it's absolutely fascinating there's some weird stuff happening here something very interesting so <laughs> if you want to experiment yourself it's it's pretty easy to do so it's good fun and that might do follow-up videos on this if there's enough interest and uh things come to light I'm here all week. Catch you next time. <laughs>